So I'm going to title the podcast today, Aspiring Greatness. And we can all think of people, uh, when we think of greatness, we can think of someone. And a lot of times it's uh, celebrities, somebody extremely wealthy, um, Olympic uh, gold winners, uh, gold medal winners. You know, it could be, you know, anyone like that. But uh, when I'm talking about greatness today, uh, aspiring greatness or striving for greatness, um, I'm going to think of Billy Graham. Uh, I've read a lot about Billy Graham and... uh, he was just uh, one man. He was a man. He was human. Uh, but he strived for greatness in his Christian walk uh, with Jesus. And just a few examples that I can remember. I've read a lot about him. Just a few examples were, uh, you know, when he was in um, college and studying to be uh, a pastor which he ended up being um, one of the greatest evangelists ever. But he admitted there were several guys he hung out with that were much better preachers, much better speakers than he was. The problem was they weren't striving for greatness and they fell away from the faith. And several of them did. And Billy Graham uh, hung in there strong Uh, Billy Graham would not ride in a car with another woman without someone in it. He would not get in an elevator with another woman um, without someone else in it. Um, He just did not want to take a chance on someone saying he did something when he didn't do it. And he also didn't want to take the chance on um, any temptation whatsoever. So he avoided it altogether. And, uh, you know, he was also a husband of, of many years. He was a, a father of several children, and he admitted some of his um, parenting mistakes. Um, one of them was that, um, which, I, which I never forgot, and uh, especially raising children, um, he said, you know, when I, when I would have arguments with my wife and um, or disputes or disagreements, however you want to word them. He said, uh, the problem was um, we did it in private. We didn't do it in front of the children. So when they got married and they had disagreements, they didn't quite know how to handle them because they never saw us make up, apologize, fix it, and he said that that was a struggle for them uh, because we never let them see that side of things, which we should have seen. Lo- that, that was part of life, and we should have let them see that so they could see um, the other side of it or how to deal with it. And uh, so he, he was very transparent and um, just a strong, strong man of God and uh, won millions to Jesus. Um, over his lifetime, and um, just a neat guy. So when I think of greatness for a human being, I think of Billy Graham. Um, That's mine. Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to the Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Okay, welcome back to the Greg McAfee Show, where we discuss steps to successful entrepreneurship, how to take your business to new heights, and ultimately follow your dreams. Again, today we're going to be discussing aspiring greatness. And I define greatness, here's my definition of greatness, adhering to strong ethical and moral principles while striving for and reaching a level of excellence that sets you apart. That is greatness. And I strive for greatness every single day of my life, no matter what I do, whether it's in my business, where we're number one in our territory, where whether it's 
in my fitness journey where I'm making great strides, I only have about three more pounds to go to hit the 100-pound loss mark, which I hope to do. Today's June 29th, Saturday, June 29th, and I hope to do that by July 4th. So um, I've already bought a shirt. It's a tank top, and it says something like, I lost 100 pounds, and I don't want to find it, <laughs> okay? And uh, I already asked Larry, my trainer, if he would, uh, you know, take some pictures of me wearing that, holding two 50-pound dumbbells, um, symbolizing I lost 100 pounds. So, and, and, and if you've listened to my podcast in the past, I've went through some of how I've done that, but it's almost a 12-point process 12-step process, rather, on how I've done it. And I tell people all the time, when I do something, I go all in. I'm, I'm aspiring greatness in all that I do. So I'm all in. And I, do, I had this 12-step process that I developed. And when I speak or teach or just consult someone over the phone, because I've got quite a few followers and I've got people asking me, how did I do it? And all this kind of stuff. And they, they're asking for help. So I tell people all the time, you don't have to follow my 12 step process. If you pick two or three or four or five, you're going to definitely lose weight. It's going to be a little bit of a slower process, but you will definitely lose weight. Um, but I look at it as a, it's an radical approach for me. It's do it, go get them, do it hard play to win. That's me. That's how I'm wired. That's how I'm made. And that's just me. I know no difference. Uh, so adhering to strong ethical and moral principles while striving for and reaching a level of excellence that sets you apart from everyone else. Okay. So part of my 12 step process was following, and I don't, follow a whole lot of people, but I, I learned from, let's put it that way. I learned a lot from David Goggins. Okay. If you can get by some of the F bombs, cause he drops a lot of them in one sentence, you will learn a lot from David Goggins. And the biggest thing I learned, um, was strengthening. And I've already had this, but strengthening my tough mindedness telling my mind when my mind says, Greg, you've already worked out this morning. You already walked three miles for lunch. Just relax on the couch tonight, Greg. Tough mindedness says, no, I'm not going to relax on the couch tonight because I'll fall asleep like I did for 20 years when I was weighing a hundred pounds more than I am today. So no, I'm going to go down and I'm going to do some cardio and I'm going to Lose 100 pounds. And this is what I have to do. That's aspiring greatness. That's part of the process of aspiring greatness. And so David Goggins has taught me a lot. And there's 11 other things. The book Atomic Habits is part of the 12-step process. I've read it three times. I bought my wife a copy and we went to Florida. We read it together together. And I put it on audio and we read it while it was playing on audio. It has helped me so much how to quit habits, bad habits, start new habits, and that whole process. It's an excellent book. It has helped me. Barbara O'Neill, listening to some of her podcasts and some of her uh, videos and some of her teachings has helped me. She knows all about the body. She knows about sugar. She knows about uh, how much water to drink and why and how much salt and what kind of salt and what foods do what for you and why. I've learned a lot from Barbara. And then the how much water I drink and how much protein I eat and how much exercise I get and how much calories I burn and my fat percentage tests and my workouts. They're all designed around certain things. It's a 12-step process to lose 100 pounds. And I've I'm going to do it within a nine month period. And that's not bad for being 60 years old, working 60 to 70 hours a week, 
starting another business, building another business, um, and enjoying life. It's not bad. And I really don't deprive myself of any good foods. I eat extremely good foods, but they're fresh, they're healthy, there's more protein, uh, and they're delicious. And I love to eat, but I just don't eat as much anymore. And I, do, and I just don't eat during certain times of the day anymore. So anyway, aspiring greatness. What's that mean to you? What does greatness mean to you? There's many definitions to greatness. What is your definition? Dr. David L. Cook, founder of the Utopia. There's a movie and there's a book. He's also the author of a book called Greatness. And he defines greatness as selfless exceptionalism. That's his definition. Okay, I'll put the book up here and you can see that the G on greatness is a little G. And the reason is, he says, because Jesus told us that the greatest of all is a servant. You read the Bible, the greatest of all is a servant. Well, I've read that book two times, and I bought several of them. They're, very, they're a very expensive book. Here, his philosophy was, if you want to be great, you got to be willing to pay for it. It's about $100 a book. It's a little bit less than that when you buy bulk. But I bought the first book for 100 bucks. It was worth it to me. Greatness. I wanted to learn more about being great and not just great. Great in the in a worldly way. Great greatness, strong ethical and moral principles while striving for and reaching a level of excellence that sets me apart from everybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. I don't want to be like every other heating and air conditioning and plumbing company. I never have been from day one. I don't want to be. When you walk into my facility, you think it's a medical facility. It's extremely clean and professional. And our people are clean and professional. I don't want to be like every other heating and air conditioning company. I don't want a dark, dungy, dirty place with gas valves and parts laying on desks and all that crap. I never have, have never have. Our trucks are very professional. They're cleaned anywhere from two to four times a week. It depends on if it rains or not. There's no stuff on the dashboard. They're clean inside and out. They're inspected often. I want, I, I'm striving for greatness. I'm aspiring greatness. When you do that, it, it's a radical approach. But it has paid off well. And it will also pay off well later. It all depends on what you want. Some people aren't willing to pay the price. They don't care even. They don't care to pay the price. Their their comments are something like this. Here's what you'll hear. I would never do that. I don't have any desire to do that. I just don't have the motivation to do that. Why would I do that? I make enough money. Those are just a few comments you get. I don't have the desire to do that. It takes too much time and effort to do that. I don't know how to do that. I'm not smart enough to do that. (laughs) There's a lot of things. There's a lot of excuses that you get for someone who doesn't want to be great. There's actually one chapter in that book, Greatness. Never seen this before, and I've read over a thousand books, and I think it was genius. It's the last chapter. It's called um, How to Take the Narrow Road to Fearlessness. And if you're willing to read that chapter, you got to break the seal. That chapter is sealed. Dr. Cook said it's basically not for everyone. Not everyone wants to do it. Not everybody wants to take that narrow road. Not everybody wants to be fearless. Not everybody wants to be great. I just wonder how many books are bought that nobody breaks the seal. I can't imagine paying $100 for a book and 
on greatness and not breaking that seal, but but I'll bet someone they don't they can't take a risk. If I break that seal, then I'm going to be held accountable to do more. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Not everybody wants to be number one. I've said this before. Some people are very happy being number four, five, 15, 20, 500 out of 1,000. I mean, they're perfectly okay with that. They make enough money to get by. They have a business. They have a few employees. They are perfectly comfortable and content with that. No desire to grow or be great. And that's okay. It takes different people to make the world go round. But if you're listening to my podcast, you know that's not happening here. I'm striving for greatness. I teach people how to. (laughs) And I teach people how to be exceptional. I teach people how to be excellent in what they do. Greatness. What a word. Just to give you a little summary, Greatness by Dr. David L. Cook is a nonfiction book that explores the hidden principles of greatness and shares stories to inspire readers. He likes to inspire people too. The book is intended to send a message to influencers. If you're a leader, you're an influencer. You're influencing people every day. He sends a message to influencers during times of uncertainty and during times of change and to disrupt the traditional publishing world. Nobody's ever put $100 on a book. Nobody's ever, that I've ever seen. Now, there's some collector books out there, a lot more than $100 that I've paid for, but nobody's ever put um, $100 on a book that's about you know this thick. You know, I think it has about 22 chapters, but it's not it's not a hard read. It's an easy read, but it's an exceptional read. Dr. Cook poured his heart into this book on how to be great. Selfless exceptionalism. How do you even come up with that? You you gotta have your PhD to come up with that, you know? So What's your personal definition of greatness? How does how does it align with fulfilling your potential? There's greatness and achievements every day. People people do things that I always say the opportunities in America are unlimited. We could, we just keep coming up with stuff. And Thomas Edison said a hundred years ago, there'll always be opportunity. There'll always be new opportunity. He became dissatisfied with a kerosene lamp. There'll always be opportunity. All right, here are three core principles that I believe are essential for achieving greatness. Are you ready? Here we go. Number one is persistent effort. It is consistency and action regardless of any obstacles. And the more we do, the more we perform, the more we're into, the more sales we have, the more revenue we have, the more obstacles we have. So it's persistent effort, consistency in action, regardless of the obstacles. In other words, we we move through obstacles. We go around, we go through them, we go around them, whatever it takes. We're persistent in our effort because we know we're going to face obstacles. We face challenges every single day. If you're a business owner, if you're a manager, if you're a leader, you're going to face challenges and obstacles every single day. And it's not that you're facing them, it's how you face them and how how they end up. And how do you learn from them? I said the other day, 34 years experience running a business. I've come up almost against all of them. So when when it does get to me and someone brings me, hey, I got a problem. I don't know how to handle it. And they throw it out. And I go, well, try this, this, and this. 
And they go, how did you know that? Because I've run up against it so many times. It hasn't changed just because it's 10 years old. I mean, the, the outcome, fixing the problem, it hasn't changed. It still works. Still dealing with people. All right, number two, core principle. Essential for achieving greatness is not quitting. I just don't quit. It is not an option. When I got into my fifth month of, of my new transformation, fitness, diet, all that stuff, I only lost two pounds in 30 days. The thing is, I was still doing everything I was doing when I lost 10 months the month before. I was still doing everything I was doing. I'd actually, I would actually gain three, lose two, gain two, lose three. At the end of the month, I, I looked at it and I go, I only lost two pounds the whole month. That's when most people quit. They go, this isn't worth it. I'm working too hard. But I, I just knew if I kept doing what I'm supposed to do and just kept doing it and kept doing it, it's going to pay off. And the next month, I lost eight more pounds. We, it, you just can't quit. I mean, you got to have a deep, and I mean deep desire to do everything the best you can. And you got to have a tenacity to hang in there. My definition of tenacity is a bulldog hanging on a rope. That bulldog will not let go of that rope until you either cut the rope or cut the bulldog. I'm serious. They have the tenacity to hang on forever. You got to have tenacity in your business and in your life to hang on. Keep hanging on. Steve Jobs said this. Wish I could have met him. I'm convinced that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneur from the non-successful one is pure perseverance. I'll read that again. Put it up on a screen. I'm going to read it again. I'm convinced that about half of what separates the successful entrepreneur from the non-successful ones is pure perseverance. He got that right. Number three, learning from failure. Again, we all fail. But when pursuing greatness, we learn from our failures and we press on. We also, when you're pursuing Greatness. You also realize your weaknesses. You know your weaknesses. I tell people all the time, when we interview someone and we say, give me, give me, give me three strengths. Bam, bam, bam. Give me three weaknesses. Uh, uh, really? When I did interviewing, I used to tell people all the time, do you want my three? Or do you want my 12? I mean, I know my weaknesses. When you're aspiring for greatness, you know your weakness. You know your weaknesses. You work on them, but you know them. You're not afraid to be transparent about them. Many that strive for greatness appear to be more humble as well than the average person. When you're aspiring for greatness, you just appear to be more humble. You're not afraid to say, I'm wrong. I'm wrong all the time. I make mistakes all the time. I'm wrong. When you're aspiring for greatness, you're okay with that. You're okay with being wrong. I always say I got to be wrong a lot to get to the rights. And I, you know what? I said three and there's actually four. I continued. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I continued working on this darn thing. Um, in the last hour, trying to fine tune it and tweak it. And I added one more. That's funny. Uh, service to others. I thought that was extremely important. Service to others. What if greatness was more about how you show up in your life and lead with service and humanity? Well, you know, what if greatness was more about others than you? And it actually is. Greatness, according to the New York Times bestseller author Lewis Howes, it's a, he says, 
It's all, greatness is all about service to other people in the pursuit of your dreams, making sure that everyone else wins around you while you're winning and empowering people around while you grow and succeed. So it's all about helping other people win. That's greatness. When we hire people, we love taking people from zero to 10 in their trade. They come in here right out of high school. They're mechanically inclined and they got a good attitude. That's how they make it here. And then we train them. And some in nine months, man, they're, they're killing it. They're in a truck. For others, it's a year, year and a half. That's okay. But we're taking them from zero, ground zero, up to a 10. And empowering them to do more. Giving them a trade for life, no matter where they go. When we talked to the ACCA the other day, a couple of weeks ago, on my podcast, there's a lot of changes coming down the pike. And with those changes, the income level of HVAC is going to increase drastically. You're going to be able to make more as a HVAC technician and installer and everything else than anyone, than most, most, not everyone, than a four-year college degree all day long. And some, some do that now, but pretty soon, in the next six months, a year, two years, it's going to be extremely high income in HVAC. That's what I foresee. So service to others. Zig Ziglar said, you know, you can get anything you want out of life if you help enough people get what they want. What does someone want when they come here with zero experience? They just want to learn. So helping and teaching and empowering other people is the greatest of greatness. It's the peak of greatness. It's not all about you. If it is all about you, you're on the totally wrong road to the greatness station because it's not all about you. It's not all about you being great, okay? Adhering to strong ethical and moral principles while striving for and te reaching a level of excellence that sets one apart. It's not all about you. You help other people do the same thing, and that's powerful. And you sleep better at night. So personally, I'm an entrepreneur, and I, I am definitely all about cash flow. I am definitely all about sales. I am definitely about all, all about being number one. I'm definitely all about profits. Very important. But personally, I'm all about helping other people. I've told you guys this before. Those that really get into this podcast and learn from it, I don't make a dime doing this. I do it because I enjoy doing it. It's my Saturday job slash hobby. I love it. It costs me to do this. It's not free to do all the editing and everything else we do to put this out. It costs me to do this. I'm not making anything doing this. And, I, and I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I enjoy helping other people. And helping them, I like. I enjoy helping you think differently. I enjoy helping you grow. And that's just a passion toward greatness for me. And remember, one of my favorite books in the, in the top three or five is Good to Great. We're talking about greatness. A lot of those guys that went from good to great strived, aspired greatness. Okay. Now, I want you to just reflect on your definition of greatness, whatever it might be. You know, what are the steps that you can take to pursue it in a very unique way? Be different. Be different than everyone else. And then, you know, my call to action to you today is to urge you to take one small step today. James Clear says improve 1% every day. Um, but one small step today toward your version of greatness every day 
improve 1% every day. Someone the other day said, how do you do that? You just improve every day. If you do that, it's 1%, okay? Just improve every day in what you do. I'll tell you, greatness, something to aspire toward is greatness, especially my definitions. I, I don't, there was many definitions I didn't like. It, it wasn't what I was talking about. It wasn't what I meant today. I want you to be your best. I want you to be number one in your territory. And not just to be number one. Number one, because you serve people better than everyone else. You do high quality work. You stand behind your work no matter what. No matter what. And when you do that, you'll aspire for greatness. It'll change your life, change your family life. I said today earlier that it's part of your legacy. You'll pass it on to your kids. See, a lot of times, a lot of times you don't have to teach your kids. They catch it anyway. They just catch it. They see it. They catch it. They do it. My dad never had to tell me you make sure, because he wasn't that kind of person. My dad wouldn't tell me this. He didn't give me, he didn't give me much advice. So my dad never once said, you need to be on time to work. I just watched him be on time to work. I watched him never miss a day. And I caught it. And other than some surgeries that I've had to have, I've never called in sick for work. I've never missed a day's work. In my stupid days, I've been late to work for certain reasons, but I've never missed day's work. So I caught that. I caught it from my dad. He, didn't, he taught me that in a way without saying anything. He showed me how to do it. Okay? Powerful. Do it, do it for your kids. Do it for your family. Okay, I hope this was beneficial for you. I hope it'll change your life. I hope it'll uh, help you in all that you do to aspire greatness. So before we wrap up, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe below. You can also support this podcast by rating and reviewing on iTunes or your preferred listening platform. Keep listening. I'll do my best to keep challenging you and help you think differently. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at The Greg McAfee Show. No spaces, no underscores. Thanks for listening. And as always, carry on. God bless. Make it a great day. We're not promised tomorrow. So make this day the best day of your life. See you later.